Duck and Goose Go to the Beach by Tad Hills. Don't you just love it here, Duck Goose honked? The two friends relaxed in the early morning sun and listened to the hum of the meadow. Butterflies flitted and grass swished in the breeze. Yes, I do, Duck agreed. Let's never leave, said Goose. Suddenly, Duck jumped up. You just gave me the greatest idea, Goose, he quacked. Let's leave. Let's go away. A what? Goose honked. Away. Let's take a trip. <clears throat> Goose gulped. A trip? A trip sounds far away. I like close. We could go on an adventure, Duck said. An adventure? That sounds scary, Goose honked. Come on, Goose. A hike might be fun, Duck quacked. A hike, said Goose. That sounds like a fine way to twist your ankle. Duck sighed. He gazed across the meadow toward a distant hill and began walking. Goose followed. I will walk, but I will not hike, he grumbled. Why would anyone want to leave this meadow, Goose wondered aloud. It has everything right here, like this stump, this hollow log, the gurgling stream, our ball, of course, the lily pond, and don't forget the shady thicket. Duck and Goose floated along the stream they never floated along before. They walked by a pile of stones they never walked by before and passed the biggest tree they'd ever seen. They walked across fields and up and down hills. By the time Goose reached the top of the highest hill, Duck was already gazing off into the distance. What's that? He quacked. Could it be the beach? Goose honked. Duck's tail twitched with excitement. I'm pretty sure I love the beach. You've been to the beach, asked Goose. Not yet, said Duck, and he took off down the hill. Follow me, Goose, we're going to the beach. Goose chased after Duck. But Duck, we already had our adventure, he called. Wait, he shouted. Slow down, he honked, but Duck did not slow down. Goose followed him through the brambles and tall grass until finally Duck stopped. I think we have arrived at the beach, said Duck. <clears throat> oh my, the beach is loud, yelled Duck over the sounds of the waves. I can barely hear my own quack. Goose stared at the vast stretch of sky, sand, and sea. Isn't it magnificent, he said. Oh dear, the beach has so much water, quacked Duck. I feel tiny. Have you ever seen so much sand, honked Goose? It's getting in my feathers and it's too hot on my face, said Duck. Let's go. Go swimming? Good idea, Duck, said Goose, and he raced to the water's edge. No, Goose, wait for me. Duck dipped his hot feet in the water. Goose, you know these waves are very... These waves are very fun? Is that what you were going to say, Duck? Honked Goose. No, not exactly. The two friends strolled along the beach. They met the locals. Some were friendly, others were not. Some were shy, others were not. Goose thought Duck might enjoy searching for sea creatures under the rocks and seaweed. He did not. Be careful, Goose, you don't know what's in there, Duck quacked. They built a drip castle and they listened to the gentle roar of the ocean from deep within a seashell. It made Duck homesick. It sounds just like our gurgling stream, he quacked. Later in the day, when the sand had cooled and the waves had settled, Duck and Goose relaxed. I like the smell of the beach, Goose said. Me too, Duck agreed, but not as much as the meadow. Well, there's no place like the meadow, honked Goose. That's very true, said Duck. <clears throat> so in the late afternoon, Duck and Goose followed their long shadows home, and they talked about their exciting day and about the friends they'd met. They talked about the hot sand and the cool water, the noisy crashing waves and the quiet tidal pools. Back in the meadow at last, they watched the sun set. Birds sang and grass swished in the breeze. They both agreed it was nice to be home. Duck, where should we go next? Goose asked. Duck closed his eyes. How about to sleep? <laughs>